We've now had our first official look at the brand new winter update arriving in Halo Infinite this Tuesday. We already knew that we'd be receiving the third person mode and I of course spoke about the new playlist being the Halo 2 throwback playlist in yesterday's video. So I'll only briefly be going over those things. But we've also seen some brand new cosmetics and heard about some sandbox updates, which yes, does include the brand new weapon, the MA5K Avenger. Which, no, is not a weapon model, it is not a cosmetic locked behind an operation pass or a paywall behind the store. It is a new weapon that you'll be able to use in matchmaking and will actually be one of the starting weapons in that new Halo 2 playlist. Anyway, we've got quite a bit to delve into today, so without wasting any more of time, let's jump straight in. First things first, third person. Again, this is something I've spoken about a little bit now in a couple of other videos, but Halo Studios have been working pretty hard to make sure that third person does feel fun and does actually work correctly. Of course, the gameplay itself isn't inherently going to be entirely different from first person, but it is cool to play it from that new perspective. And of course, this will be something that you can utilize in Forge to make various new ways to play modes. Third person will initially be releasing with a firefight playlist where you'll have the option to either play the mode in first person through that own playlist, or you can try the new third person out separately. This will not just be a toggle that you can enable while playing a match. I know there's a few people that were worried that it would give you the, an advantage as you'd be able to peek around corners and stuff like that. But luckily, this isn't going to be the case. You can either play first person modes or third person modes. But of course, as mentioned, this is something that you can toggle and mess around with in Forge and custom games too. Again, one of my favorite uses of it that have been shown so far was in a clip they showed of Juggernaut, where if you are not the Juggernaut, you are playing in first person, but as soon as you take them down and become the Juggernaut yourself, your camera then transitions to third person. I think stuff like this can help make modes feel really immersive and give them a bit more uniqueness. It'd be cool if in something like Infection, all the Infected are playing in third person, but the Survivors play in first person. I think it could definitely help to change the atmosphere of certain modes. There is also the new Halo 2 playlist coming out, which will feature various new remakes of certain classic maps like Lockout, Ascension, Warlock, Beaver Creek, and more. There's no sprint in this mode, no clamber, no slide, and friendly player collisions are enabled alongside a higher jump height to give the gameplay that more floaty feel that some of the classic games have. The starting weapon here is actually going to be the new MA5K Avenger, which is, I believe, the perfect point to actually talk about this new gun. So yes, it has been now confirmed that it is an entirely new weapon. It has a 60 round mag, and it looks like it will function a bit more similarly to the Combat Evolved AR. They have obviously labeled this as an SMG. It is extremely efficient up close, but the second you start getting a bit further away, the less efficient the gun becomes. Of course, it does seem to reuse some animations from the AR, and there is similarities between those two guns, but in lore, it is obviously a modified version of the MA5. So this isn't really something I'm against. The two things I do hope for with the MA5K is that one, I would like it to be customizable. I would like to be able to equip coatings and stuff to it, especially if it is a starting weapon in certain playlists. And two, I would also like to see it get its own weapon variants akin to like we've got with the Ravager Rebound or the Longshot AR and many, many others. It would be cool to have an entirely different version of this gun to use in Super Fiesta. And this would also be beneficial as it adds even more variety to the sandbox. They haven't said whether or not there will be a weapon variant, they also haven't said there won't be, but as of right now I've seen nothing to indicate that there will. Obviously when the Bandit Rifle released back in Season 3, that also didn't have its own weapon variant straight away, but they did later release the Bandit Evo, which to be fair isn't necessarily a super weapon variant, so I would still like to see that happen with the Bandit too. Anyway, the Avenger looks extremely fun to use. They did, of course, show quite a bit of gameplay off with it. So I am really looking forward to trying this one out. And I am really glad it's not just a weapon model. I know there will obviously be some complaints in regards to this being the new weapon or being the only new weapon. Yes, it would be nice with the operation being called Great Journey to receive some kind of covenant or banished weapon like a plasma rifle or fuel rod cannon. Or if they're going to do an SMG, you would think it would make more sense to just do the Halo 2 SMG. That would be a bit better for the theming. However, again, this is not something that I really have an issue with personally. I am completely fine with the MA5K being the new weapon. Because personally, I'm just happy to have a new sandbox item. Anyways, finally, let's talk about some of those new cosmetics. First of all, we have the Mark VI armor kit. Yes, unfortunately, this is a kit and not a core. This does mean you will be able to change the armor coating, the visor, and of course, apply different armor effects. But you won't be able to use the helmet and shoulder pads on your own Spartan, nor will you be able to change the helmet or shoulder pads of this kit, which is a little disappointing. One thing I did notice is this is specifically called the Master Chief Mark VI armor kit. 
as opposed to just being called Gen 1 Mark 6 or something along those lines. Which, I know it's a bit of copium, but does give me the hope that there will be a Mark 6 armor course somewhere down the line, which might be a bit different. Maybe if they take the approach, that it'll be the Gen 2 one or a different variation of the Mark 6. Obviously, there is some slight differences between Halo 2s and Halo 3s. So maybe one of those is released as its own core instead, which would be really cool. We, of course, also have the new free armor in the operation. I should have mentioned it already, but the Mark 6 kit will be in the store. This isn't really that surprising. The Mark 5 kit was in the store and that sold incredibly well. So I cannot even pretend to be surprised at Halo Studios have made this decision, this cosmetic will probably sell pretty well for them, but it would have been cool to have some kind of free way to unlock it. But speaking of free armor, of course, we do have a new operation pass, and this is where you unlock the armor based on Halfjaw. The purchase bonus for this operation pass is the new sniper model, which is, of course, also based more so on the Halo 2 sniper, and this looks really cool. It does also come with a coating, I believe. But the other things you unlock in this operation are, of course, the new half-jaw helmet. There's also a chest attachment for the Mark 7 core, which just makes your body look much more like an elite's armor. There is also a new armor coating, which looks spectacular, alongside some shoulder pads and knee pads. The helmet does also come with a helmet attachment, which is an interesting one, to say the least. Overall, seems like a decent Operation Pass, but again, I do feel like ever since they introduced spawn points, the Operation Pass themselves have become a bit more underwhelming in terms of the overall content that is actually unlocked for them, because instead you get a bunch of spawn points, which can go, go towards some of the new stuff in the Exchange, but the Exchange doesn't always have new releases. So for someone like me, who has unlocked almost every old event or item and ultimate reward, there, is a, there isn't really a ton to spend the spawn points on. We didn't see anything that will be in the exchange with this update, but I would wager that we're getting the return of some of the tactical ops items, as you can see a Spartan with the Scorpion Punch and the Mark V Zeta on the banner for the event. There is also some other new cosmetics coming to the store, including the return of the Helio Skrill armor set, of course a fan favorite from Halo 5, shares a lot of similarities with the Arbiter's armor, and it actually does come with a helmet attachment, which makes the helmet look more akin to the Arbiter's. This armor set does look pretty cool, it'll be in a super bundle alongside the Mark VI kit and some of the new Chimera armor which is releasing, which is also based on 343 Guilty Spark, which is another cool addition. And then there's one other final set of armor that's been shown off in the Wartime Requisition bundle, and this one looks pretty cool too. This is honestly one of the better sets of armor that I think we've had in a while, it looks really nice, and I can't wait to actually see this one myself in-game. And on that note, I think we've covered everything. Overall, Great Journey is shaping up to be a really fun operation, and this update is shaping up to be something quite special, with of course the first new weapon that we've had in such a long time, the new classic playlist with plenty of cool remakes to play on. There are some sandbox changes coming with the sidekick and commando in how their bloom operates. And yeah, I think Halo Studios have actually done a pretty good job with this update. They have said there'll be another big one during the Easter period that'll start at February and then lead into the next three operations from that point. We know we're getting two more after Great Journey and then there'll be the Easter update, which will be the next three operations as well. And hopefully we get another sandbox item then. Anyway, happy Halloween. Hope you're all having a great day. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.